Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the conferment ceremony of the Doctor of Philosophy, Honoris Causa, of the University of Haifa's highest accolade upon Mr. Moshe Safdi and Ms. Marina Abramovich. My name is Karen Tsur, and I have the privilege of hosting this evening's proceedings. I will introduce myself properly a little later in the evening. As is the case in all academic ceremonies and in true University of Haifa fashion, I kindly ask the audience to stand while I'll introduce the members of the university's academic procession as they enter the auditorium. Please remain standing until all members of the procession have taken their seats. The first to enter the auditorium are the members of our degrees committee, Professor Amit Bernstein. Advocate Wafa Zwabi Fahoum. <laughs> Professor Irit Akirav, Dean of the Graduate Studies Authority and Head of the Bloom Graduate School. Professor Ophir Alon, Dean of the Faculty of Natural Sciences. Professor Daphna Canetti, Dean of the Hertha and Paul Amir Faculty of Social Sciences. Professor Israel Issi Doron, Dean of the Faculty of Social Welfare and Health Sciences. Professor Batya Engel Yeager, Dean of Students. Professor Rosa Leikin, Dean of the Faculty of Education. Professor Ephraim Lev, Dean of the Faculty of Humanities. Professor Shai Tzafrir, Dean of the Teaching and Learning. Professor Tal Jalski, Dean of the Faculty of Law. Pudding, Mr. Moshe Safdi, Mrs. Tova Sagol, and Mr. Shlomo Dovrat. Pudding, Miss Marina Abramovich, Mrs. Batya Shani. and Mr. Doron Livnat. <clears throat> the University of Haifa Administration, Professor Muna Maroon, VP and Dean of Research. Professor Meir Chemo, Vice Provost. Mr. Sharon Zaid, VP and CEO. <laughs> Professor Gur al -Roi, Rector. <laughs> Professor Ron Robin, President. And finally, our distinguished recipients, 
Mr. Moshe Safdie. Miss Marina Abramovich. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Well, we have a full and exciting evening ahead of us, so let us begin. So as I mentioned, my name is Kiran Sur. I am an actor and director. I uh, studied acting at the Department of Theater right here at the University of Haifa, and I pursued my graduate degree in the same department. Today I also lecture and direct in the department and uh, more than any other such academic department in Israel, the University of Haifa's Department of Theater places great emphasis on performance. My foundations are found here and I am grateful for the opportunities I was afforded. Thank you. To open our evening, I have the pleasure of introducing the chairman of the University of Haifa Board of Governors, Mr. Bradley Bloom, who has sent us his greetings from Boston. Go ahead, Mr. Bloom. Good evening, everyone. I'm joining you from Boston, and on behalf of the Board of Governors of the University of Haifa, I thank you all for being with us and helping us honor two giants architect Moshe Safdi, and performance artist Marina Abramowitz. Throughout this evening, we will learn more about these two remarkable individuals who, with their incredible bodies of work, inspire us, make us think, and create a better place for us to exist. This ceremony and bringing these two gifted recipients into our fold is part of our remarkable university's journey to create an unparalleled academic experience, one that is not only inclusive, but holistic, catering to the scientific mind and the soul through art. Both Moshe Safdi and Marina Abramowitz will serve as sources of inspiration to our students, magnificent role models in helping them shape their future. In fact, the new academic year has just begun days ago, and thousands of young women and men have started their academic journeys with us. This evening and this honor we bestow demonstrates to them that we will provide them with a robust academic experience, excellent for sure, but also creative. As you know, the university has just celebrated its 50th anniversary, and this evening is part of that celebration. There are many wonderful and exciting things in the university's future, products of hard work by the entire university's staff. This includes a strong and committed collaboration with the Wieso School of Design, which will enhance our curriculum and allow our students more options and choices, catering to their many facets and interests. We have already fully integrated in the, into the vibrant downtown area of Haifa with the inauguration of the Lori I. Loki Technological City Campus. Unfortunately, Mr. Loki has recently passed away, and we send our profound condolences to his family. We should take th this opportunity to thank Bacha and Shaul Shani who have gifted the university with a beautiful arts gallery, a project whose initiation was celebrated just this afternoon. Thank you, Bacha and Shaul, for this wonderful gift. I want to also touch upon another exciting event that will happen in the very near future. This coming December, in fact, we will be conferring the same honorary degrees we are conferring tonight, President Bill Clinton and Professor John Sexton, the former president of New York University. The connection to us is through our own president, Professor Ron Robin, who, as you know, was responsible for the establishment of NYU Abu Dhabi about 15 years ago when he was vice provost at New York University working with President John Sexton. 
President Clinton spoke at the first graduation ceremony of that new university. These three presidents will be joined by a special guest from the United Arab Emirates on December 12th in New York City. Getting back to the main event of this evening, however, Marina and Moshe, congratulations on this honor and welcome to our family. Enjoy the celebration. Thank you, Mr. Bloom, for your lovely words. Now I have the great privilege of calling upon the president of the University of Haifa, Professor Ron Robin, to deliver his greetings. Professor Robin, the stage is yours. Good evening, everyone. Before I begin my remarks, I was asked by several people outside, why, why am I dressed differently than everybody else? So, um, other than I'm a little vain, the fact is that it is customary for, for the president to wear the robes of the university where he or she received a PhD. And I received my PhD at the University of California. These are the colors of the University of California. These three stripes does not mean I'm a sergeant. It means I have a PhD from that university. This is the color of arts and sciences, white. And as for the hat, I think it's just a cruel joke and I'm gonna take it off. <laughs> so, uh, we're here to celebrate uh, two wonderful people, but uh, I'm actually beginning, I'm gonna begin by celebrating somebody else. Uh, we're gonna celebrate Ozzy Freeman. Now, don't rack your brains about who Ozzy Freeman is, because he doesn't really exist. He, this is a fictional character who appears in the very um, first published story by Philip Roth called The Conversion of the Jews. If you haven't read it, it's hilarious, and I advise you to read it. So very briefly, I'll tell you uh, the plot of the story, because it leads directly to our two honorary um, doctorates here today. We first meet Ozzy, in Hebrew school, it's some, somewhere in the late 1930s uh, in New York, where he is the bane of the rabbi's existence. He constantly questions dogma, and he constantly questions co conventional wisdom. He's the sort of kid, we know that we all should be like that. Uh, he is uh, tender yet courageous, he's querulous and intelligent, uh, he's a little too fascinated with his idea, but willing to follow something to the very end. He's willing to question everything. After all, he's Ozzy Freeman. This drives the rabbi up the wall, as you can imagine. And this fraught relationship uh, reaches some sort of um, crisis when uh, the rabbi is describing the difference between Christianity and Judaism and, uh, uh, and casts doubt on the idea of immaculate conception. And Ozzy gets up and says, oh, come on, if God can create the world in six days, with fish and animals and, and light and light. You mean to say that God can't do an immaculate conception? That means that God is not all powerful and you're telling me God's all powerful and the rabbi just loses it. And he, he says to Ozzy, he, just, uh, he says, you're, you're simple-minded and I'll tell you something, you're somebody I will never bar mitzvah under these circumstances. Ozzy flees from the building, he rushes to the roof somehow unintentionally locks himself on the roof and is misconstrued by everybody as about to commit suicide and a crowd gathers below. And everybody's staring up, you know, like in a planetarium when you're looking at the Milky Way, everybody's staring up at him over there and saying, don't jump, don't jump, until the proverbial little child, always in every story at the end, says, jump. And the crowd picks it up and they start saying, jump, jump. Now I'm gonna leave you in suspense about how the story ends. I would like you to read it. <laughs> and turn instead to our guests who may feel a little neglected by my discursion to Philip Roth. You, Marina and Moshe, are the Ozzy Freemans of this world that we all crave to be, but we're not quite sure how to get there. We want you to jump. And we crave to leap however imperfectly in your footsteps. We live in a world where we are constantly tugged 
by the polar forces of individual freedom and convention, tradition and innovation, you both in very different ways have managed to find beauty and freedom and a way to create art and beauty despite the constraints of the human body, despite the constraints of the elements of the built environment. And uh, for that, uh, we are very honored to have you here. Now, how did you do this? How did you figure out how to touch? How did this happen to you? I'm going to repeat a little bit of what I said last night for the guests who were last night at the Segol residence. Because I'm a professor, we don't change our notes. We change our audience. So it might be a little repetitive for some of the people here. <laughs> so I'll offer a couple of explanations. Um, both Moshe and Marina have witnessed the tension seemingly irreconcilable in zones of ethnic strife. Moshe has described in detail in many interviews the world of 1948 through the eyes of a child when Haifa found itself in the eye of a storm after the declaration of, of the state. And yet, Moshe's first signature project incorporated elements of vernacular architecture, Jewish and Arab, showing how actually this could work together. And it does work. As for Marina, she grew up in Tito's Yugoslavia. Marina discovered and learned to live with the constraints of a totalitarian system, perhaps the only way to keep the ethnic tensions in Yugoslavia from getting out of control. And I remember reading an interview, Marina, where you say, the truth was hidden from us, yet we all found ways to circumvent obstacles to get to the real picture. That's what is so I think common to both of you, you find ways to get around the obstacles, whether they're human or part of the environment to get to the real picture. And of course, you are the ultimate examples of intellectual immigrants. You have lived everywhere. You are cosmopolitan. You managed to come up with a, um, a form of discourse that appeals to everybody. And that can only come from people who have had that ability to move around. And all of the above, your background, your choice of medium, however different, has led to originality, an unrepentant embracement of the human spirit, and the pursuit of beauty and the pursuit of humanistic values, no matter what the circumstances would be. Moshe, you quoted in your lecture today uh, somebody who said, well, are you going to build us, if you think it was in Jerusalem, are you going to build us a modern or a traditional building? And you replied with great diplomacy, if I succeed, you won't be able to tell the difference. Conventional uh, modern architecture, when it comes into contact with tradition, there's usually a conflict. And you have found the way to actually move those things around. You've been able to incorporate local material, the mores and values of place and time, even in your most monumental structures. And we discussed this at your lecture today. And as for Marina, this quote I, I mentioned yesterday, I cannot get over it. Uh, in an interview, M Marina spoke about the great French uh, artist M Matisse, Henri Matisse, during World War II, when everybody, Picasso and everybody were painting atrocities, there was Matisse painting flowers. And I think uh, it is incumbent upon all of those who belong to the creative class to have this optimistic view and create just the opposite of the strife that surrounds us. We live in very troubled times. Ill winds strain the tenets of Western democracy. There's a war in the East that threatens to spiral into an existential crisis. And of course, we disregard climate change and sustainability, and it imperils, imperils us all. But we survive, and we will flourish led by the optimistic urge of those who insist in following in the footsteps of Matisse, those who paint flowers no matter what. And we're honored to have two of those painters of flowers among us here. Um, you both see us as a place worthy of offering you the highest accolades. Thank you from the bottom of our collective heart. Thank you so much, President Orwin. The university has prepared a short film about the role of the arts in the academia. 
how the University of Haifa uses art as a bridge between cultures and people and how we heal through art. Let us watch it together. Art is all around us. It surrounds us, makes us think. As an integral part of our commitment to social responsibility and environmental sustainability, our focus on the advancement of the arts makes us different. More attentive, more open, and more diverse. We at the University of Haifa believe that art is a bridge and we cross it with pride. You can't be a person and sit with him and music. The Arabic language is a Jewish language in 2010. It's a lot of different Arabic, Jewish, from all the nations. משקפת את הקיום המשותף שמאפיין את אוניברסיטת חיפה ואני חושב שבכוחה של מוזיקה להפיל חומות של שנאה ושל אי הבנה ושל סכסוכים. ארט מקינג זה חלפול בטרנסלטינג סנסיישנס ופילינג שאין אין אקספרסיבל אין וורדס. ארט has several components that we believe are helpful. First of all, the tactile engagement with the materials is soothing. People are able to remain, women come into the art room feeling stressed out, uh, uh, in distress, and they leave with a sense of relief and reduced symptoms, and that is such a privilege. And you start to learn so much about other cultures just by a small piece of art. My name is Carol Farah, I am from Nazareth, I study creative arts. The diversity in the university really helps me with my studies because I feel like it widens my horizons and I can kind of put that in my art, which is something that you can see here in the university as well. Some people try to include their religion or their culture. Art is a great bridge between people and cultures and this is what I love about the University of Haifa. As an inseparable part of our social commitment, we at the University of Haifa place great importance on integrating art, community, and higher education. The Hecht Museum, with its exceptional pieces of art from Modigliani, Van Gogh, and Monet, and leading Israeli sculptures whose creations adorn our beautiful sculpture garden. The Museum of German-speaking Jews in its new home on our campus plays and exhibitions performed by the graduates and faculty of our School of Arts. Our campus is a unique expanse situated between mountain, city, and sea. Here, we celebrate art, and it is everywhere you look to enjoy and be inspired. Art within the broader setting of a university serves as a bridge, linking our multifaceted, fascinating cultures here on campus. Through the medium of art, we all become more tolerant and accepting. So please join us in crossing that bridge. Wow. I'm very proud to be a part of the University of Haifa community. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening is an academic celebration, and I have the great pleasure of inviting to the stage the University of Haifa Rector, Professor Gur al -Roi. Professor al -Roi, the podium is yours. Good evening, dear guest, dear Marina, dear Moshe. I am excited to stand here at the honorary doctorate ceremony awarded to Marina Abramovich and Moshe Sabdi, both in my hat as rector of the university, 
but also in my head as historian of the Jewish people in modern times, specializing in Jewish migration. I will begin with few words about the University of Haifa and our academic vision. University of Haifa is a research university nestled between mountain, city, and sea, located in a unique social and ecological nexus. It is a symbol of excellence in interdisciplinary research in Israel and worldwide. University of Haifa's strategic plan focuses on social and environmental issues as part of its effort to improve human welfare and Israeli society. Its public engagement will play a key role in Israeli culture, geography, and community life. University of Haifa is a catalyst for change, promoting and developing leadership in public and business sectors and encouraging everyday coexistence within Israel between members of various religious groups. The University of Haifa takes part in the global effort to change Israeli society, humanity, and the planet. We have officially adopted the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations, and we conduct ourselves according to them in research, in teaching, and in operation. Another important fact to note about the University of Haifa, we are the most diverse university in Israel, where Jews, Arabs, and Druze study together in cooperation and mutual responsibility. Dear Marina and Moshe, I mention all this because both of you, in your different creative fields, are also artists who influence society. Artists and creators who can change our perception. You understood the power of art and architecture, and through it, you strive to impact people and community. Marina was born in Belgrade, Serbia today. Moshe was born in Haifa, Israel. She studied at the Academy of Arts in Belgrade. He studied architecture at McGill University in Canada. Marina is a conceptual and performance artist. Moshe is an architect and urban planner. Apparently, there is no distinct resemblance between their path, but there is much more than one meeting point. I will mention one historical event with two similar perspectives, the Holocaust and the memory of the Holocaust. In 2021, Abramovich created the Crystal Wall of Crime, located in Babi Yar, Ukraine, a country which is currently under a mer merciless and brutal Russian attack. The interactive installation commemorates Jews killed in one of the biggest massacres of the Holocaust during World War II. It symbolizes the impact of mass murder on our collective memory and what must be learned from the past about the future. The wall creates spatial spaces where people can reflect, feel, and remember. The natural quartz crystal set in the wall are aimed to heal the wounds of the past by reconnecting with the individual body experiences. The wall of crime is wall 40 meters long and three meters high, made by coal mined in Ukraine with quartz crystal blocks mined in Brazil. Water spouts from the top of the wall, it seems as if the coal is shedding tears. At night, the crystals are illuminated from within. 
The crystals are set in columns of three, directed at the head, the heart, and the stomach of the observer, and the visitors are invited to touch and feel them. Moshe Safdi designed the Yad Vashem Museum, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. He designed a museum building that combines the history of the Holocaust as an experience that will leave its mark on thousands of visitors. An architectural design which makes the museum itself an integral part of the visitor experience. At the end of the historical story inside the museum, one reached the Hall of Names. This is the culmination of the emotional experience in the museum where the visitor meets the victim, the individual. In a separate room, visitors can conduct computer search in the central database of the victim's names. I see a direct connection between the crystals in the walls of crying at Babi Yar and the Hall of Names in Yad Vashem Holocaust Museum. Before us is a masterful example of art and architecture in the service of memory with the individual at its center. I will mention two other examples of, of, of how art and architecture create social impact and force us to think and redefine ourselves as human beings in complex society. In 2010, I live in New York and I was one of those tens of thousands of visitors who came to MoMA to see Abramovich's epic exhibition, The Artist is Present. How show lasting 730 hours and 30 minutes in which the artist sat motionless and in absolute silence and visitors were invited to sit in front of her for a few minutes at a time. I watched the long line of people waiting for their turn to look into your eyes. And I witnessed the impact of art that moves you and that involves you, the spectator. Influential art, relevant art, that the public can connect with and feel with all their senses an unmediated, emotional, and powerful connection between the artist and the individual. I also visited the Itzhak Rabin Center, which a few days ago we painfully marked 27 years since, the, since his murder by a Jewish assassin. The center designed by Moshe Sfadi is built as a spiral route describing Yitzhak Rabin life path, while the galleries depict different chapters in the development of Israel society from the days before the establishment of the state to the assassination of Prime Minister Rabin on November 4th, 1995. The roof of Yitzhak Rabin Center is shaped like dove wings, a bird that symbolizes hope and peace and the end of the era of violence and war. Moshe also designed Rabin's tombstone on Mount Herzl. The headstone consists of two polish and shiny stone blocks made of marble and black basalt and together form a semicircle. The blocks of stone represent the war of light against darkness and between them, the eternal fire. The Zionist thinker, Aaron David Gordon wrote, there will be no victory of light over darkness as long as we do not stand for the simple truth that to fight the darkness, we must increase the light. 
And that is what you are both doing, in fact. I will quote the last two stanzas from a poem by the Turkish poet Nazim Hikmet, The Great Humanity. There is enough bread for all, except the great humanity. It is the same for rice, for sugar, for clothes, for books. There is enough for all, except the great humanity. The great humanity has no shade on his soil, no lamp on his road, no glass on his window, but the great humanity has hope. You cannot live without hope. In your works, you both transmit hope to the great humanity. And we thank you very much for that. Works that explore the relationship between performer and audience. Works that touch on sensitive issues and reflect a vision. Works that seek to, un to demonstrate the possibility of the mind and works that lead ideological and social change. Works dealing with different topics and projects that require political, historical thinking and social and cultural context. Moshe and Marina, in your innovative creations and design, your artistics and architectural work, you manage to increase the light in the world. Both of you are for me, for us, a model of what university research and study should be. On behalf of the University of Haifa, thank you for coming and thank you for accepting this honorary doctorate. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin with the award ceremony. Our first recipient this evening is a renowned and extremely talented architect whose remarkable and beautiful works can be found all over the world. The University of Haifa has a long tradition of honoring its recipients with a filmed tribute. Let us watch it together and learn a little more about the inspiring Moshe Safdi. Moshe Safdi was born in Haifa in 1938 and relocated to Canada with his family in 1953. Graduating from McGill University in 1961 with a degree in architecture, in 1964, Safdi established his own firm to realize Habitat 67, an adaptation of his undergraduate thesis the signature exhibit at the 1967 World's Fair in Canada and a turning point in modern architecture. In 1970, Safdie established a Jerusalem branch office, commencing major segments of the restoration of the old city and the reconstruction of the Mamila neighborhood, which links the old and new cities. Over a celebrated 50-year career, Safdi has explored the essential principles of socially responsible design with a unique visual language. A distinctive feature of his work is his commitment to architecture that is informed by the geographic, social, and cultural elements that define a place and that responds to human needs and aspirations. His wide range of completed projects all over the globe include cultural, educational, and civic institutions, neighborhoods, and public parks, housing, mixed-use urban centers and airports, and master plans for existing communities and entirely new cities. Safdi has made a significant contribution to the building of the State of Israel, so much so that today it is difficult to imagine the Israeli urban landscape without his work. He helped establish, among others, the Ben Gurion International Airport, the National Campus for the Archaeology of Israel, multiple projects for Hebrew Union College, the new city of Modi'in, Yad Vashem Holocaust History Museum and Children's Memorial, and the Rabin Memorial Center. His numerous awards, honorary degrees, and civil honors 
include the Companion of the Order of Canada, the gold medal from both the Royal Architectural Institute of Canada and the American Institute of Architects, and the Wolf Prize in Architecture, awarded for a career motivated by the social concerns of architecture and formal experimentation. The University of Haifa is proud to award an honorary doctorate to Moshe Safdi in recognition of his extensive work in the field of architecture that emphasizes a professional approach that assigns importance to the human aspects of architectural design. For his important and skillful contributions to the architectural planning of some of the national institutions of the State of Israel and for his ongoing commitment and dedication to the Jewish people and the State of Israel. A remarkable man. To award the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, honoris causa, I call to the stage of the university president and rector, Professor Ron Robin and Professor Gour Alroy. Uh, University of Haifa wonderful tradition is to honor our recipients with Hooters who are dear friends and supporters of the university. This is our way of welcoming our honorary doctorates into our family and community. This year our recipients will be presented with hoods masterly embroidered by Batya Shani, a gifted and talented artist, and as mentioned, a dear, dear friend of the university. Mr. Safdi will be robed and hooded by two distinguished individuals, great friends of the university. I call to the stage Mrs. Tova Sagol and Mr. Shlomo Dovrat. Now, without further ado, I call Mr. Shlomo Safdi to the stage. Moshe, sorry. Moshe Safdi, it's the excitement. I'm sorry. Our rector, Professor Gour Alroy, will be reading the scroll. Moshe, in recognition of his vast body of architectural work, unparalleled in its diversity and scope, for advocating that architecture should be human, integrated into the community and the environment for saving as inspiration for generation of professionals, not only through his inspiring work, but also through teaching and guidance for his many thoughtful architectural contribution to the state of Israel, such as Yad Vashem and Ben Gurion Airport, and for his role in rebuilding the city of Jerusalem, linking the old with the new, and for his ongoing commitment and dedication to the Jewish people 
and to the state of Israel. Mr. Safdi, I invite you to the podium to deliver your response. I'm deeply honored and deeply moved by this honor by Haifa University. Not only because Haifa is the city of my birth, but because I have for a long time been an admirer and completely identified with the mission of the university its diversity, its creating opportunities for all the people of this land. I also uh, wish the university great success in establishing a school of architecture in the city, which would be a wonderful addition, and also for having conquered the top of the mountain, now going down and setting its roots in the city, lower city, in the port, and anchoring itself in the urban part of Haifa. Thank you very much for the honor. Our second recipient for this evening is a world-renowned performance artist. In the span of her very long and prolific career, Marina Abramovic has created a new type of art, one that evokes strong emotions, exploration of the human condition and self-discovery. Let us now watch the tribute film prepared by the university so that we may learn more about this remarkable woman. Marina Abramovic was born in Belgrade, Serbia on November 30, 1946, to parents who were important Yugoslav partisans during World War II. She completed her postgraduate studies at the Academy of Fine Arts in Zagreb, Croatia, in 1972, then returned to Serbia and from 1973 to 1975 taught at the Academy of Fine Arts at Novi Sad. From the beginning of her career, spanning over four decades, Marina Abramovic has pioneered performance art, creating some of the form's most important early work. The body has always been both Abramovich's subject and medium. She has withstood pain, exhaustion, and danger in her quest for emotional and spiritual transformation. Abramovich's works deal the endless possibilities of the human mind and the question of man's confrontation with the unknown while tirelessly exploring the relationship between the artist and the audience. Abramovich was awarded the Golden Lion for Best Artist at the 1997 Venice Biennale. In 2008, she was decorated with the Austrian Commander Cross for her contribution to art history. In 2013, the French Minister of Culture accepted her as an officer to the Order of Arts and Letters. In 2021, Abramovich was awarded the Golden Medal for Merits from the Republic of Serbia. Abramovich also holds multiple honorary doctorates from institutions around the world, including the Royal Academy in London. In 2010, Abramovich had her first major U.S. retrospective and simultaneously performed for over 700 hours in The Artist is Present at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in what is to this day the largest exhibition of performance art ever held at the museum. In 2021, only a few months before the beginning of the Russian invasion on Ukraine, Marina created the Crystal Wall of Crime at the Babiniar Holocaust Memorial Center to commemorate the Jewish lives lost at the Babiniar massacre. In 2012, Abramovich founded the Marina Abramovich Institute, a platform for immaterial and long durational work to create new possibilities for collaboration among thinkers of all fields. 
The Institute will partner with the University of Haifa to present young long durational performance artists during 2023. The University of Haifa is proud to award an honorary doctorate to Marina Abramovich in recognition of her life's work as a role model and a source of inspiration for young artists in general and female artists in particular and for the powerful emotional experience she provides the audience through her works. An inspiring woman to award the degree of Doctor of Philosophy honoris causa, I once again call to the stage University President and Rector Professor Ron Robin and Professor Gour al -Rui. To robe and hood, Ms. Abramovich, I call to the stage two remarkable individuals in their own right, friends and supporters of the university, Mrs. Batya Shani and Mr. Doron Livnat. By the way, uh, little bird told us that uh, today is Doron's birthday. Is that right? Okay. So, Mazal Tov, Doron. We wish you all the best. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'm going to get their name right. I call Miss Marina Abramovich to the stage. President Our President Professor Ron Robin will read the scroll in recognition long life work as an innovative and transcendent artist for a commitment and dedication to erasing boundaries in the artistic world through her provocative and introspective performances, for serving as a role model and inspiration for young artists in general and young woman artists in particular to dare to create thoughtful and remarkable art and for inviting audiences to experience an array of powerful emotions through her work, to join them into a unique and transformative experience. Congratulations. Abramovich, I invite you to the podium to deliver your response. Wow. 
you know, this road was not easy. Start 50 years ago. And when I start doing performance art in my country, ex-Yugoslavia, it was like a first woman walking on the moon. Nobody even considered as any form of art. If you have the five people audience, 10 was like, wow, this is big crowd. And then I never actually give up. And it's so important to never give up. And I continue working with this immaterial form of art. And one important thing for me was always, not just my own work, but also how I can give my experience and my knowledge to younger artists, how I can actually teach what I learn and how important is actually performance art, how immaterial this form of, of art is. So which I like to say to the young artists and people who actually young students of Haifa University is never give up. Whatever your dream is, number one. Number two, don't be afraid of anything and anybody. And number three, just remember to give unconditional love to human beings, even strangers. Thank you. Uh, apparently, we would like to call our recipients, Marina and Moshe, to the stage once more with the rector and president to take one last photo, please. I'm sorry. So, so before we do this, I would like the two of you to take a picture. And if I may, I know this isn't in the plan, ask those who hooded our recipients to come up to the stage, please. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay, the party's here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our time together has come to an end. Thank you all for making this evening special for our two recipients. It was a pleasure to host the ceremony and take part of this University of Haifa celebration. Good night, everyone. Laila Tov.